In episode 15 of the 2016 Skyrim modding guide, we will be covering interior lighting mods. We'll look at realistic lighting overhaul, a combination of enhanced lighting for ENB with relighting Skyrim, and enhanced lighting and effects. I'll then walk you through my personal setup that integrates portions of the mods mentioned with patches from Vividian ENB and discuss the reasons why I'm doing it. Hey guys, it's Cal from Dirty Weasel. So, I wasn't going to do this episode this soon. I was actually going to do Clarilux and wearable lanterns, a bunch of other stuff. But, you know, sometimes you get down that rabbit hole of modding and you're working on one thing and you get so much work done on it that you didn't get all the footage for the other stuff. And once I got through with this, I'm like, well, might as well just do it now. And this has to do with interior lighting. And I was working on some other problems created with Climates of Tamriel and Audio Overhaul of Skyrim. In the end, I ended up with a lighting setup I really liked. So I just went ahead and, you know, finished putting together all the pictures and decided to do this episode now because I'm really far behind on the Clarilux thing. We're going to look first at some different lighting mods that, you know, are pretty popular that uh, I'm familiar with, and we'll just go through them. I did all the testing and looked at it and the first one we're going to look at is realistic sky realistic lighting overhaul by the realistic lighting team mod number 30450 this has been around a long time it's fairly popular two million downloads i'll show you the photos that i got from it and basically you know i do the same thing every time i take five different locations and compare the lighting for each one so i have a baseline of know what i'm looking at I try to get a variety of different lighting and see what it all looks like. Realistic lighting overhaul is dark. Really dark. Hella dark. And I would say that this is the darkest of the mods that I've been looking at. And you have wearable lanterns or other sort of lighting. You're going to need it on this. You're probably going to need it indoors for most of the main buildings. I mean, that picture of... Dragon's Reach inside, that was at noon. Noon, and it was that dark. Now, the update is a little bit better, you know, as far as that goes. I'll show you on the files, but for this, you know, I can't use this. I It's just too dark. If I'm going to be doing footage or anything else and showing it on YouTube, I can't use it. I just want to show it to you so you can have an idea of what you're looking at. Files on this, if you decide you really want to use something like this is going to be there's two main files and this is the realistic lighting overhaul 4.08-01 the bane installer just install that and uh, go through and pick all the interior stuff do not pick any of the exterior or you'll be messing with your weather mod lighting and you don't want to get into that and then there's the realistic lighting overhaul update they did you know increase in the ambient light reduce the mage light stuff but once again, make sure you don't install any of the exterior stuff. And what you do is just install the main one and then overwrite with this one. So there's that. Now I just rejected that outright, so we'll just move on. I'm not even going to show you how to install it. It's pretty straightforward. The last one that I want to kind of review for you is Enhanced Lights and Effects by Anamorphous. And it is mod number 27043. This is probably the most popular lighting mod on the Nexus. 4 million downloads, 200 or 2.5 million unique downloads. So unique users have you know downloaded that many times. And I, like I said, I've used this for a long time. One of the things I learned about it is that as you see the pictures here, this is the ELFX with interior enhancer. It's dark. Is it as dark as RLO? No, but it's pretty dark. And what it does is darkens down all the lights and darkens down all the you know interior ambient light and then increases the bloom and increases the glow of the light sources. So that's why you get that kind of you know two-tone sort of effect. And it has a very orange tint to it. In almost all the pictures, they have an orange tint. It's very dark. You will definitely need lanterns or other exterior light sources to help with this. But, you know, for me as a YouTuber, obviously I can't use the enhancer. The 
non-enhanced ver version is slightly darker than vanilla. I'll say that. It is better. So just keep that in mind when you do this. All right, guys, so you may see a little edit there. You know, we made some changes you know, up here. If you see some changes, that's because I came back and I edited things later. So let's move on with enhanced lighting and effects. I'm going to show you the files, but I want you to go through and read this stuff. And just keep in mind something that it says here. It conflicts re with relighting Skyrim. So keep that in mind because I may have a solution for you. But it tells you what it all does, what it works with, what it doesn't work with. And it seems to work just fine with Climates of Tamriel and the uh, Purity if you decide to use either of the above. And it is a great mod, don't get me wrong. It's just probably not for me anymore. But files on this. Ignore the weather mods because we know if you're using Climates of Tamriel or, or Purity, these will not work. What you're going to need is the full file, Enhanced Lights and Effects. Contains all the necessary modules. And you're also going to need... ELFX SMIM meshes if you use the Static Mesh Improvement Mod. And I would suggest using the Static Mesh Improvement Mod. It's a great one and it's pretty much on everyone's essential list. So when you use SMIM, you're going to need the ELFX. Trust me, you'll want it. Gets rid of some nasty shadows that cause performance drops. You're also going to definitely need the Enhanced Lights and Effects Dawn Guard and the Enhanced Lights and Effects Dragonborn. When you install these, Go ahead and install the main file and then merge in whatever you decide you need. You need these two because you have Drawn Guard and Dragonborn, right? And if you use SMIM, you're going to just merge that in and it'll put the new meshes in there. Don't worry about that. It's all pretty straightforward. So it's a pretty straightforward installation and just let loot figure itself out. But one of the reasons why I also decided against this, it's one, two, three, and the enhancer is a fourth ESP. That's why we are not going with ELFX. We're going to close that down. The next one we're going to talk about is a combination mod. And this one is very popular with the step crowd. And this consists of enhanced lighting for E and B, also known as Ellie, light by Jaw Z, and is mod number 59733. This is another lighting preset for interiors, basically. It has more you know, functions than that. But, you know, if you go through and read this stuff, he did some very interesting things. It is probably not as dark as the other ones that you've seen, but I'll show you some pictures in a second about, you know, kind of a, the combination together. So it talks about mod features. One of the interesting ones, it actually enhances the night and day, which is quite nice. And even though, remember, it says that it is a E and B, it says right at the top, this does not need to have an EMB series running at all. This is enhanced lighting for EMB, but it does work very well by itself. So just keep that in mind. When you come down here, you'll see compatibility issues. You know, one of the things it will not work with is the ELFX enhancer, but if you decide to use ELFX by itself, it does work. So it works with relighting Skyrim. So just keep that in mind. I'll, we'll go through and show you all this stuff in a second, but we'll move on to the second half of the combo. And that second half is Relighting Skyrim by Novak Dalton and Jaw Z, the same guy who did ELE. It is mod number 17609. I'm going to go back. There we go. That's the title page. And uh, it is basically, this is a very subtle mod. And what he does is he changes the light bulbs in the cells to correspond more directly with where the light sources should be. And you can go through and read the stuff about what it does, but you know, there's this picture and this is the before picture. You can see this is in uh, the Dawnguard castle and you can see you got the chandelier here, but the light is off to the right. And then you have the fireplace and you've got a really dark shadow in here that should be lit, at least partially anyways, by the fire in here and the, the light doesn't spill this direction. So it kind of looks a little strange. When you click on the after picture, you can see the light is now more directly above the chandelier. You've got some light in here showing that there's a fire in here, and the light spills on the floor. So it much more natural lighting. A lot of the results from this are very, very subtle, and you, you will go through the game, 
and you'll not really notice it right away until you know what you're looking for and suddenly you realize, oh wait, that feature is now kind of highlighted. I can see that. It adds more detail and it makes more sense. And you know, Bethesda's not real big, I'm making sense. So if you just want to know what the features are, you can read it right here with JIT or without JIT. And with JIT offers more shadow light bulbs and non-shadow light bulbs without causing any visual bugs like light flickering. And without JIT, no scripts, just vanilla light bulbs done right. So it's going to really get down to what you choose. Uh, I just went without the JIT and that's based off of the step suggestions that you go with and it seems to be working just fine, but I may go back and try with JIT later. Load order on this, and this is a good guide, general load order in combination with other mods. Weather mods come first, then relighting Skyrim, and then your interior lighting mods such as ELE. It shows compatible with these things right here, and you saw, saw a realistic lighting overhaul and effects, lights and effects. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to show you some pictures of what this looks in combination. When you go through these pictures, you'll see that it is not as dark as ELFX or RLO. It's kind of deceiving when you look at the pictures on the YouTube because they look a little darker than they really are. But they're just not as dark. Just trust me, when you get playing the game, it's not as dark. But when you go through it and you look at it, the light is very sensical, like it says, you know, Relighting Skyrim's fixing it. And as far as ELE goes, the light is very subtle. It doesn't have a lot of big changes like RLO or ELFX, but it's very pleasing to the eye. It uh, definitely enhances some of the things that you wouldn't have seen before. And when you go through and you see night shots, it looks very good. Overall, I was very impressed with it. And, you know, probably for me, this would be a good choice because it's not quite as dark, but it's still darker. So there's that. We'll get to installing that in just a second because we're going to go through some special instructions. Remember I said that relighting Skyrim right here is not compatible with ELFX. Well, I've got to reading Neo Valen's site, and this is Neo Valen. This is Skyrim Revisited Legendary Edition over on the step guide. Underneath ELFX, and you can see here's enhanced lights and effects right there. I got reading this just to kind of see what else he was thinking. Got through that, and I kind of scrolled down a little bit, and I said, Relighting Skyrim. Wait a second. Now, he read this, and it says, authored by Novak Dalton of the half the guys that did Relighting Skyrim. Version 36A, download here. Okay. Well, the download here is actually a version of Relighting Skyrim designed for ELFX. So it's thus the alternate download location. Make sure you please endorse the mod as really good. It is really good. So when you click on the here button, you're going to get a 7-zip file and download it to wherever you do it. Drag it and drop it into your downloads of Mod Organizer and install it after ELFX. So just kind of follow the same basic guidelines as Relighting Skyrim. Just put it after that. And even though there is no load order for this, just kind of know what you're getting. So that's a little bonus for you. If you want to see the Relighting Skyrim stuff, I took some photos of it with ELFX and all that stuff. Like I said, very subtle. It's almost impossible to see it in just still photos. You almost have to go around and look at it scene by scene, room by room. And it basically just affects rooms. So just keep that in mind. But there's a bonus for you if you do like Relighting Skyrim to go with ELFX. There you go. I'm going to close that down. Just want to throw that in there, a little bonus feature for you. ELE working with Relighting Skyrim. And this is where we get down the rabbit hole. I was working on fixing the climbs of Tamriel with Audio Overhaul Skyrim patch issue because there are none for climbs of Tamriel 5 to work with AOS. And then I read that, wait, Vividian ENB right there has the patch inside the foam mod. Huh. Okay. Let's go ahead and go through it. And I kind of went through the foam mod. I was looking at it and I said, wait, there's a lot of really good stuff in here. And there's some stuff I can use. And this is what's going to get down to our download and uh, how do I install it. 
But let's talk about the mod itself. A Vivian ENB, Weather and Lighting, Clems Tamriel 5, RCRN, Pure Weather, Purity, and NLA. It was done by Magna Club and Ben Hat. It is mod number 36067. This is a ENB, pure and simple, but it has some nice features that change the game to make it a little more visually pleasing. When you install this, it has a foam mod and you're going to kind of have to go through it. But let's look at the files. And you see Vividian ENB. Download that one with Manager because that's the one we're going to install first. And then you're going to go and download Relighting Skyrim. And you're going to get whichever file you wanted. And that's the with JIT and no JIT. So just whichever one you want. I went with a no JIT. Now you may be asking yourself, why aren't we downloading Enhanced Lighting ENB ELE Lite? Well, here's the good news. The Vivian ENB has it already in there. So that's why I told you to download those two files. That's what you got. Let's go into Mod Organizer and we'll take a look at what we're doing. And we want downloads, and I don't want to show my hidden because I was doing some cleaning. And you can see there is the ELE light. If you were to install this and then install the Vividian ENB, this is how I checked it. I installed it and then installed the Vividian ENB as per the instructions of what you're going to see in the future here. They were the exact same ESP. Okay, so I didn't need this one. I just left it so you know I tried it out. I'm going to go ahead and just remove it from view. I could delete it if I wanted to. I'm going to delete it just because. So here's how this works. We are going to install the Vividian, Vividian ENB because remember on the instructions, actually it's weather mods, relighting Skyrim and interior lighting mods. I was wrong. I get confused sometimes. You have to excuse me. So we are going to install relighting Skyrim first. I was wondering why I was at the top. Double click to install and you're going to get the foam mod and you're going to get Exterior and interior, exterior only or interior only. Exterior and interior may mess with your weather mods. Just keep that in mind. I would probably go with the interior only. Interior only, click next. And you're going to get legendary, Dawn Guard and Dragonborn, but not Hearthfire, custom and none. Just go ahead and put in the legendary. It's a single ESP this way. Saving you a little bit of space. And install and activate it. Come on, activate it. So now you have Climate to Tamriel, followed by Relighting Skyrim. You notice it doesn't have any conflicts, it's just, it's just there. So just know what you're getting on this, Relighting Skyrim. The next one is the difficult one to install, and I'll go through it all correctly with you. Vivian ENB, double click to install, you'll get another FOMOD. And you can see Vividian, Vividian Weather and Lightning Enhancements 7. And you could do, if you're just doing a, you know, a ENB thing, you could try one of these quick ones, either the Vanilla or Vivid. But we're going to do a custom install because I want to have all my choices. Go and click Next. And these are the ENB files. If you're not using this as an ENB, don't worry about this. I'm not endorsing Vividian. I'm just saying it's a good ENB and you can use it as one. So there's that. Just leave it all as you see it. Click Next. And this is where we get into this. And you can see ELE Lite 0.95B. Huh, I told you, it's in here already. That's why we didn't need that other file from Enhanced Lighting for E and B, because it's in here. I'm going to go ahead and choose Legendary. Just match the pictures that I showed you and scroll down. These are the old ones, the old version. You can go ahead and work with this if you don't like Legendary, but I found that the lighting in these, and you would get the interiors Legendary Edition, was much lighter. It didn't have as much depth, and it didn't, it didn't look quite right. So I chose the Legendary version. Go and click Next. More ENB local files if you want to have additional files for your ENB setup if you're using Vividian ENB. Same thing goes with this, as set your data, your depth of field, okay? There you go. But I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that old no change for right now. Go ahead and click next. These are additional ESPs to fix certain things. 
Let's scroll it down here. These are fixes for Skyrim. Dim torches, it reduces the light of the torches to make them more realistic. And we'll just go and leave it in there for right now. Red lights color fix, so the, some of the interior lights aren't so red. I'm gonna click yes for right now, just so I can have the option of doing it later. And then remove sun glare, required, recommended. Required is for EMB users. Recommended is for the rest of us. And I do recommend it. I thought that Clamps of Tamriel sun glare was a little ugly. And when you use, when you get rid of the sun glare, it changes the clouds a little bit. It makes it a little nicer. So I actually liked it. So I went ahead and clicked that as well. And it's going to, you know, put more stuff in. This is probably, this is just going to be meshes. These two are ESPs. Meshes only on this one. Compatibility patches for third-party mods. You see lanterns of Skyrim preset and the wearable lanterns preset. It's kind of why I wanted to do this one first so you can go through it. But I'm going to go ahead and click yes on both of those because I want the options without having to reinstall the darn thing. And move down. And you have mind flux particle patch and fixes. These are recommended if you have an ENB because these particles can cause problems with ENBs and they make them look real funny. I'm going to select no on that. And mind flux subsurface scattering patch if you already use SMIM. And I'll be using it in the future, just, just face it. Subsurface scattering patch. I'm going to leave that unchecked because I, I will never see a, a point where I need this. So just go ahead and click next on that. Some snow files, snow, snow, lots of snow. And you can see a couple of different choices. You have no, no thanks, non-physical snow. You can read about that. The most performance friendly and recommended. You'll still lose some frames on this because it installs real Skyrim snowflakes as a non-physical version. So it will still drop through roofs and whatnot. And then physical snow, this is experimental. Uh, eh. You could try it. I'm just going to say no thanks. I don't need this. Click next. And here's where it gets kind of interesting. What weather mods do you use? All right, you have vanilla, RCRN, pure weather, purity. I'm stopping here. If you use purity, you can go ahead and click yes. And I'm going to show you some pictures. Now, what's interesting about using purity with this setup is that you'll notice that when you use it, it does change the lighting interiorly of those shots. And that told me something interesting is that purity will actually change your color schemes inside of interiors. Hmm. Didn't know that personally. I kind of suspected it from using purity before, but I wasn't really sure. So, you know, if you're using purity, I would go ahead and you click this because it does enhance it a little bit. I tested it out, ran around a bit. It made it a little different. Not better, not worse, just different. But I would try it out. But for me, Clamps of Tamriel user, I'm going to click Vanilla. When you scroll down to your next choice, do you use Clamps of Tamriel? Yes, I do. Wait, there's another option. Yes, and I use Audio Overhaul for Skyrim. Ah, okay. When I tested this out, I fired up TS5 Edit to see what it was doing, and it fixed the patches, or fixed the ESPs, for Climates of Tamriel and Audio Overall Skyrim to work together. So this would be our solution later on when we download Audio Overall for Skyrim. So we're gonna go back and have to do this. But there are other options. If you use ESS, ESS and AOS, ESS and SS, ESS, SS, ALS, or none. So for right now, I'm gonna leave it at Climates of Tamriel. This made it actually the landscape actually looked a little more vivid. It was kind of weird. I'll show you a picture right here. The first one's without the Clamps of Tamriel patch. The second one is. It did look more vivid. Kind of strange, but it did work. Go ahead and click. Oh, there's one more option down here. Somerset Isle. Do you use Somerset Isle? Click it here. Click next. And it says, read the description of what to do. Sure, I guess. Yeah. But even if you don't click, you can still install it. So just go ahead and click yes and install. You have this down here. We'll go ahead and activate it. It's going to throw a bunch of plugins in there, but don't worry about that. I'm going to open it up. 
take a look at the optional ESPs. So you can see a bunch of them here. We're going to move, can I move this down? Yeah, all right, move it down. Can I move this down? Not really. All right, so you got a bunch of them here. The ELE Legendary Light, we want that. That's going to work with the Relighting Skyrim to give us the desired effect. The Lanterns of Skyrim preset, I don't have Lanterns of Skyrim, so I'm just going to move it up. That way I can, you know, if I decide I want the preset later on, I can just move it back down. Same thing goes with wearable lanterns. Go ahead and move that up since we don't know if we need it yet. These two, the weather patch and the vanilla patch, vanilla, I found that when I first tested it, they were both in here. I had horrible Z fighting by having them both in there. When I move vanilla up and had just the weather patch for Climates of Tamriel, the Z fighting went down on very clear days. I mean, that was the problem. On clear days, you could see a lot of Z fighting in the mountains. Just having the one reduced it a bit, but it was still there. That was a problem on Climbs of Tamriel. I think if you use something that increases the depth of field, blurs the mountains out, and I tested with Dynavision, it worked just fine. You know, or just even a little bit of cloud cover over that, they went away. Only on very clear days are you going to have that Z fighting. We need this down here. The red light fix and torches preset are both choices for you. You know, you'll have to decide whether you like it or not. I thought the red light fix was helpful. The torch preset, not so much. But you could turn the torches down just by putting it down there and you'll get these effect. Just keep that in mind. Whatever you want to do is fine. I'm just going to go ahead and put it up for right now because I know I want the red light fix. So now that we got this squared away, let's go over into our files. We'll take a look. You got file tree and you're going to see optional and you got the Vidian torches and stuff that we said were optional, that's what those are. You have the textures, and that's the sky textures for the sun glare. I'll minimize that down. You got the ELE legendary light. We need that, the meta.any, the red light fix, and the weather patch for Climates of Tamriel. You may be wondering, what is this Vividian ENB install files? This is the actual ENB portion of this mod. So if you are not going to install an ENB, you can either hide it or you can delete it. Either one, it's up to you. I don't plan on using it right now. I could always reinstall it later if I want to get them back. I'm just going to delete it because I don't need all that extra space. Delete, yes. And there they go. And we can go ahead and click close. Now we go into our down, not downloads, plugins. And we go down and take a look at it. I'm going to run loot once. Here we go. All right, we made some changes. So first off, a video in red light fix, it didn't know what to do with it. And that's fine. I don't, I don't really care that much what it does with it. I'll probably end up putting it up here. Remember the rules for relighting Skyrim and ELE. You come down, you scroll down to the rules and you see load order with relighting Skyrim. Relighting Skyrim, then ELE. If you go to the relighting Skyrim rules, weather mods, relighting Skyrim, interior lighting mods. Okay, let's see what we got. We have Clamps of Tamriel is up here. Then we have the patch for Clamps of Tamriel, that's good, and the Knights. Then we have relighting Skyrim legendary, then ELE. So this is already, Loot figured this out on its own, that it was correct. In test runs, it didn't always do that. You throw in a couple more variables and it may throw things around. So you will have to maybe lock it in. I do this a lot because I don't like playing with Loot's priority and rules section. So I would just lock those in. So, and the weather patch, just lock it in so it doesn't move around. The red light fix you can put up anywhere. I would probably put it right about there. Just lock it in as well. Oh, what the heck, right? Sorry, Chance is making noise in the background. He's like rustling with his toy or something. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> so this load order looks good. If you were to run loot again, it would probably move things around again, but it would keep these locked into place. And that's kind of what I want. So that's it. I mean... 
this will work just fine. If you need to make changes and you decide you want the red light fix or the torch preset, move it down. Or a Lancer Skyrim, just move these things down. It'll throw in extra ESPs and you can move them accordingly. Like if the patch, you're probably going to, if you need to get the wearable lanterns patch, you're going to need to put it after wearable lanterns. Simple, right? Easy peasy. So that's how I did it. And it looks good. Some people may disagree with me about doing it this way, but I like the look. I played with it. I actually got some playtesting in. Fiona and Lydia went on a road trip all the way to Morthal and then into Solitude, and it looks pretty good. And I didn't see any major issues. Couple, you know, good days, couple bad days, a little bit of rain. I didn't see any problems. So, in my opinion, I even, you know, did a little dungeon diving. It looked pretty good. So, I'm happy with the lighting. Will I need lanterns underground? Probably not. But it makes for better YouTube videos, quite frankly. Because if you have darkness, people don't like looking at a dark screen. They really don't. But if you're playing, I would probably try one of the darker ones and try and get it darker overall. But that's just what I'm doing, guys. And I, you know I like to show you everything that I'm doing. So that's it for now. Another episode down. I promise I will get to Clara Lux and the Lantern stuff in the next episode. My name's Cal. I'm from Dirty Weasel. And I'm signing off.